Uh, oh, hang on, my camera right. <laughs> hey guys. Um, <clears throat> so, I have been trying to do this video all week. And for whatever reason, it just hasn't uh, hasn't worked out yet. Um, I've made this intro, I don't know how many different times. I've started talking about this topic, I don't know how many different times. And I've either been interrupted or I've just decided to nix it and to do a little more testing. Just, you know, I'll make sure I'm good and clear on it before I admit to being wrong. Yep, I'm admitting to being wrong. It happens, you know, there's a... The old saying is, you know, a, a broke clock is uh, is right twice a day. Well, you know, I'm probably wrong twice a day, if not 20 times a day. Ask my wife. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so the topic is with rates and racing. So recently, you know, you saw that uh, we had a uh, race with uh, with our local group, our first ever uh, multi-GP race. And... Um, it was a whole lot of fun. Um, I didn't do nearly as well as I would like to have done, but I probably did about as well as I figured I would have done. But um, I just thought that I would have uh, flew much better than I did. So after doing that, you know, I went and I did some uh, some testing and stuff, and you know, came to the conclusion that I definitely can fly better than I, I showed there. But then I also came to the same. I came to another conclusion, which is. Uh, your rates definitely do matter. So I did my, my testing and I was, you know, pretty satisfied that I could definitely fly faster down low through smaller gates than what I was doing at the race. What I found out though was that I also was still having trouble with turns and, you know, hitting, hitting stuff, um, coming at it and then just like a quick turn, you know, come back through it or whatever. I was having, having trouble doing that. And I kept having a lot of problem with, um, I like I'd overturn or I'd, you know, underturn or I'd end up hitting the throttle too much because of my turn and all these different, different things. And so I figured I just need to practice more, which I definitely do, but that wasn't the only reason that was causing it. So along about those same time, um, a friend of mine, he had, he had asked, well, probably before that, he had asked about. Uh, rates and racing rates and whatnot and using different rates for racing versus freestyle and I told him that I thought it would be better to keep the same rates for both because you're you're learning and if you know you learn one way then changing the other is going to be much more difficult you know same token there was a lot of guys I know that do uh, race with lower rates but I also thought that they flew probably with those same rates just typically um, but I'm coming to find out I don't think they do so, um, so he'd asked about that and I told him that. And so then he mentioned, uh, Bardwell had said something in his, one of his newsletters or something the other. And, you know, I just kind of dismissed it. And, um, so then I see Bardwell's posted again on Facebook and I was like, all right, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to give it a try. You know, I've been wrong about stuff before. Um, so I figured I'd give it a try and see. You know, let's just let's just try it. So he he gave suggested rates to try, and so I put those in, and decided to uh, do some flying with it. So that's what I've been doing this past week, just with that, not flying any other rates. I did put the rates on a switch so I can flip back to my typical freestyle rates, and then I've got his rates, and then I've got like the default beta flight rates. So all those on like a, a three way switch. Um, and so I'll put uh, I'll put some more stuff in here. I'll probably cut it in about now on how to do that. And I'm on the uh, PID tuning screen. And what you want to do here um, to set up rates um, on a switch, first thing you do is, is define you know what rates you want. So in my case, I've got three different rates. That's that's the most you can have. It's three rates. So rate one, rate two, and rate three. So what I have for mine is rate three is the uh, beta flight defaults. Rate two is the racing rates that I've been messing with. And then rate one, of course, is my standard freestyle rates. So once you've defined your rates, you get each all those set up there, you save that. Um, you wanna make sure you have expert mode enabled. 
and then you want to come over to the adjustments tab. Now I've got a uh, I've got an additional aux channel defined in my Tyrannus, and it comes through on aux two. So first, you want to do is you want to um, to turn this on. You want to pick that channel, whatever channel it is that's that's got your switch, and then you want to drag this by default. This bar is like all over here. You want to drag this bar so it's from end to end, so all the way through, and then you want to select rate profile selection here and slot one and then via channel will also be the same as this and what this is going to do is as you flip the switch this is going to move from down here to the middle up near the top here I think around 2000 something like that um, so those three positions so depending on which position you're in then that's going to pick the rate so if I'm in position one which will be down here then that is rate profile one. If I'm in the middle position, that will be rate profile two. And if I'm in the third position, that'll be rate profile three. Um, so what I did was my, my top position, of course, is my, my standard freestyle rate. And then after I'm um, connected, I put it on rate two or rate three or rate one, whichever rate I want to be on with my switch. And then you can do it. Now, with 317 and um, Betaflight 317 firmware and Betaflight Configurator 321 you should be able to on this PID tuning when you flip the switch it should change which rate you're looking at here but in my case it doesn't so the only way that you know that it works is you have to actually um, just arm the copter or test it now one of the things you can do is you can disconnect this and then um, change your switch, reconnect, and you'll see that it loads up the correct profile. Um, it'll work on the copter side, all that's fine. You can leave it arm, you can like, you know, disarm, change your, pro your, your profile you're on, rearm, and it'll be the new one. Um, I haven't tried it while it's armed, so I don't know if that'll work or not, but um, you can definitely do it while it's disarmed, um, while you're bound and disarmed. So, it's just one little thing to watch out for there. I was hoping to be able to test and, and check this, you know, before I went and flew with it when I set this up. But apparently with 317 um, Betaflight firmware and Betaflight configurator 321, it doesn't appear to update the GUI like it's supposed to. I've heard some people say it works. For me, it doesn't. So your your mileage may vary. You may get It may work for you. It may not work for you. I just wanted you to be aware of it. So that's all there is to it. Basically, define your switch and your Tyrannus or spectrum, whichever area you've got, additional aux channel. Um, come in here, set your rate profiles up that you want, make sure you save that. Enable expert mode, go to <coughs> your adjustments, enable one of those, set it for the aux channel on both sides here. This wind channel and via channel to the same, whatever that aux channel is, in my case is two. Make sure that you drag this bar so that it's in, the entire piece is highlighted and um, choose rate profile selection here and slot one save that and you should be good to go hopefully that helps you guys all right so now that you see how to do that you can do it yourself um so um i decided to give this a try and so um the uh the first test i did was i like i put my camera and go up a little bit more and I put those rates in and just went flying with it and found that I definitely felt like I had more control. But I was just kind of flying, you know, in big ovals and not really doing a whole lot of, you know, different stuff. And so I've, over the past few days, I've flown at the barn. I've flown some different different things. And then today, um, back in my little favorite proximity spot here with the million trees, I thought this would be a good, a real good test to see just what it's like flying those really low rates through these really tight uh, trees and flying around them and turning and all that kind of stuff. And I've come to the conclusion that it definitely works. Now, can you fly with high rates through these tight things? Heck yeah, you can because I've been doing it. Um, can you do it proficiently? Heck yeah, you can definitely do it proficiently. Um, I'm just saying that you can definitely um, give this a try and see what you think. Um, 
basically I have one for my RC rate and I have, I don't remember what it is for super rate, but lower it down enough to where it's like 300 on roll and pitch and 600 on, uh, yeah, I'll put, I'll put on the screen here what the rates actually are and I'll put it in the description too, what, uh, what I ended up with. Um, no expo. And what I found is the six definitely are more dead, um, of course, because you're you're going to get you know a lower lower resolution, you know slower turning um, than normal. But what I found is when I'm making corrections, I'm not I'm not having to correct as much, and I'm not overcorrecting when I do. Alarm. Shut up, Trance. Oh, I forgot to turn it off. Turn that off. All right. So, I'm finding that I'm not I'm not making as many corrections, and I'm not overcorrecting whenever I do. Um, the only downside is adjusting to the the speed of it. And if you've been flying for a while, you can adjust to the speed of it pretty quick, and it almost feels normal. Um, I haven't went back to fly my other rate shit. I need to do that, and I'll try that out sometime. I'll like f take a session, and I'll like flip between them and see just how quickly I can adjust back and forth between the two of them. Um, I did find you can do some you can do some freestyle, not much freestyle, more like the freestyle you would have in a race. So you know things like doing a split S over and back through something, um, that kind of stuff. You know, or maybe a uh, you can do a loop or whatever. You know, um, or a dive. Those basic maneuvers, but you know you don't do like real fast spins or any of that kind of stuff. You're not going to have that. Um, so definitely not for freestyle. You definitely want higher rates for freestyle for the majority of it. But you can um, do some acrobatic maneuvers that you might need to do in particular tracks that uh, require it. Um, I'm pretty impressed. I'm uh, definitely um, kind of shocked that it works as well as it does. But for me, so far, for doing this kind of proximity tight, tight proximity flying, um, flying through gates, flying down low, around you know tight turns just maintaining general control and through, you know, following a path. You know, I found that I can I can follow a, um, a given flight line a lot easier. You know, you have a line like on the ground that kind of curves and turns and stuff. I can I can stick with that line pretty easy like I was flying at the baseball field and was able to, you know, kind of stay right on the, the baseball diamond, you know, pretty easily. Follow the outline of the, the field pretty easily, you know, flying through these trees and stuff pretty easily, you know, maintain the line, doing a quick turn you know, around a tree, you know, quick come through a tree, quick turn, come back through it, you know, all those maneuvers. Um, pretty pretty easy to do. Um, if you've been watching here, you see some of the footage I've been showing, you know, periodically here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, um, it's probably not for everybody. Um, but, like I've said before, don't always assume you're right about everything because you're probably not. <laughs> Give stuff a try. And don't just, you know, do it once and dismiss it. Um, give it a try and give it, you know, several days. Um, maybe even switch away from it, go back to what you're used to, come back to it, let it marinate, you know. Do those things, but give it a fair shake before you say, yeah, it's not for me. Or no, it doesn't work. Because I'm going to tell you, it probably does. You just may not have given it enough time. So definitely don't don't dismiss things. You know, there's there's probably some some tips and tricks out there that are terrible. I I don't know any off the top of my head, but there's probably some. You know, if somebody tells you to hook the negative to the positive and the positive to the negative, yeah, that's a bad idea. You don't want to do that. <laughs> but if they're giving you a tip on improving your flying or things to try with your flying, you know, to make it easier to do things better, um, don't dismiss them. If they you know tell you to try a little expo in your your rates, try it. See what you think. You know. And don't just do it once. You've got to give it, you know, three, five packs, maybe 10, 12, you know, several days even. Um, give it a fair shake and fill it out and try stuff. Um, you may be pleasantly surprised. So that's kind of all I want to say, you know, just about the, the rates and stuff. Um, like I said, I'll put the details and a link to Bardwell's article and stuff down there in the description. Um, and give it a read. See what you think. Give it a try. You never know what you may find out doing that. Now, is this the rates I'm going to fly all the time? Heck no. God no. But for racing, it might be what I'll do. I don't know. I've got to, I've got to do it some more. And But right now, I really like it. And overall, I'm getting a feel for it. Um, so, you know, 
busted my GoPro the other day. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. So this is giving me an opportunity to fly and not worry about getting like this epic, you know, acrobatic footage or anything. I'm just practicing, trying some new stuff, that kind of thing. So for a while, you may not see any, uh, any HD footage from me until I get the money saved to actually replace my camera. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to, I'll still be posting videos. I'm still going to do a lot of how-to stuff. Still going to post some flight stuff, but it'll just be DVR type footage. Probably with me talking kind of like this. Um, so you guys uh, give that a try. Let me know what you think. And, uh, you know, if you got any other tips or tricks of things to, to try and stuff, you know, for that, put them down in the, the comments. You know, I'll read all that stuff. I answer every single comment with something. Um, and maybe somebody else will see something that uh, they'd like. And if you give me a really cool tip, you know, maybe I'll uh, put that in there and give it a try myself and see what I think. So you guys have a great day. And like I always say, never stop flying.